Okay, uh, I'll then start. It's uh, about time. So yes. I welcome everyone on ISNM Missy live webinar series, and we are happy that you guys are here. This session will be a 45 minute presentation followed by 15 minutes Q&A session. And you can also submit your questions via the chat box throughout the session. And we'll be addressing the questions in the order that they are received. It is now my pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Ram. Dr. Ram received his medical training in India and is now a clinical researcher at the Department of Surgical Sciences, Uppsala University Hospital. He pursued his master's and doctoral studies at Uppsala University, Sweden. Dr. Ram has served as a member of various international societies and was selected to present his research at the ANITS, ENM, and ANITS at T. His clinical work and research is focused on oncologic imaging, especially pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas, mainly with CT, PET-CT, and SPECT-CT, and also in addition studying, not in studying the pathophysiology of diabetes mellitus. Also his research revolves around new tracers and thermostic agents, such as C11-hydroxyaphedrine and lutetium-177 dotatate. Without much further ado, Dr. Ajurat Ram. Thank you, Zaima. Uh, thank you, IASNM, and also Misi for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself and uh, make this presentation on the nuclear medicine imaging and treatment on pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma and how this tracer carbon-11 hydroxyephedrine is feasible in diabetes mellitus. Um, thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, that leaves me to begin with my presentation. So these are the topics that we would talk, discuss today. PET-CT in the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, the non-invasive imaging, of sympathetic innervation of the pancreas, and PET-CT in post-operative surveillance and therapy monitoring of pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. And finally, uh, we saw a favorable outcome in patients treated with lutetium dotatate. The carbon-11 molecule, when it's, uh, it needs uh, in-house cyclotron to be uh, to be produced and the half-life of this radionuclide is 20 minutes uh, and it's an expensive uh, radionuclide to be produced in-house and this is the main trait uh, this uh, we combine with hydroxyephedrine uh, and use it as a pet ct tracer and uh, it's a really expensive scan, as you know. It costs around $2,000. Do we want to use this all over the world for any disease or few diseases? That's the question that I would like to answer today. Hydroxyephedrine is a norepinephrine molecule which attaches where the molecule MIBG attaches to the human norepinephrine transporter receptor and uh, on each, on every cell. And uh, PET-CT uses this technology uh, to image these cells and then we have a PET image with uh, this tracer. To briefly overview what pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma is, um, Sympathetic tissue is present in all, in most of our organs. Uh, and uh, the primary location of the sympathetic tissue is the adrenal medulla, as you can see here. Also, uh, the sympathetic nerves are present all over the body. Uh, and we are not going to talk about parasympathetic tissue today. Pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma are rare uh, neuroendocrine tumors uh, which metastasize in 
for 5 to 20 percent of patients. They produce catecholamines and the five-year survival rates are poor. The disease presentation is of four types. Patients present with symptoms consistent with PCC or PGL. They accidentally present to the clinic uh, who undergo radiological imaging because of other reasons than adrenal disease and adrenal incidentaloma, or they present with tumor-related symptoms such as pain or mass or bulky tumors, or they are screened for genetic diseases of um, probably the patient has uh, medullary thyroid carcinoma or something else, and they're screened and they, uh, the clinicians find that there is a fear chromocytoma or a paraganglioma. They arise from uh, adrenal or extra adrenal locations. And they pose a diagnostic challenge. They are clinically vague uh, uh, and uncharacteristic symptoms. They have equivocal biochemistry and morphological imaging is often inconclusive. They're characterized by catecholamine overproduction. These catecholamines lead to a myriad of non-specific symptoms like headache, palpitations. So it's really a difficult disease to clinically diagnose. The risk of short and long-term consequences are many if you don't diagnose them. Therefore, these tumors have to be diagnosed uh, to prevent uh, this cardiovascular sequelae. The prevalence of PCC or PGL in hypertensive patients is around 0.6%. And then in some patients, there are non-secreting tumors which can remain silent for decades. Also, uh, identification of the patient's genetic status helps us to tailor uh, treatment better in these patients with different theranostic agents and also uh, diagnostic agents. The clinical scenario could be uh, varied. And if there is extensive disease, there is good nuclear medicine related solutions. We shall, after this brief introduction, we shall now talk about uh, hydroxyephedrine PET CT in the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma presented primarily. The aim of this study was to diagnose or rule out uh, pheochromocytoma or paraganglioma in complex clinical scenarios. It was a retrospective study um, at a single center, Uppsala University Hospital, and patients were referred from various parts of Sweden to this center. The reason of their referral was either they had uh, adrenal incidentaloma or biochemistry was equivocal or uh, patients could not be diagnosed at these uh, secondary or primary centers. So 102 patients were uh, scanned with a head PET CT uh, uh, underwent a head PET CT scanning. And out of these, 57 patients uh, presented with borderline biochemistry and 29 patients had elevated biochemistry. Only 68 patients out of the 102 patients presented with symptoms. Head PET CT was positive in 26 patients, but was negative in 76 patients. Let's see uh, what these positive patients revealed. In 20 patients, uh, they had a tumors uh, after uh, pathological and anatomical diagnosis was revealed as a pheochromocytoma. And in six patients, they had paragangliomas. Out of the 76 negative patients, 36 presented with sympathetic hyperactivity 32 patients had adrenal incidentalomas, which were adrenocortical adenomas, which are tumors of the cortex and not the medulla. 
And in three cases, there were benign lesions, two were hyperplasia, and three were metastasis from another disease. So in total, there were 76 patients with uh, negative head PET CT scan, but symptoms and biochemistry, which were equivocal uh, and which presented like pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. This is an example of a 73-year-old female who presented with a PCC. Uh, as you can see on your left, uh, the CT image, you can see that you cannot differentiate these two tumors uh, from each other. But on your right bottom screen uh, of the screen, you can see that there is head pet CT uptake on the, the cranial part of the figure and not in, in the tumor here. And this is an adrenocortical adenoma, and this is a pheochromocytoma, which was removed later. And as you can see in this 71-year-old male, uh, you can appreciate that there is a tumor in, in the CT image on your left. And there is high intense head pet CT uptake. This is to demonstrate that uh, Head pet, see, uh, head pet, the tracer head pet uh, rightly accumulates in the tumor. But it's very difficult in the CT images to find if there are any other metastases. The head pet CT shows that there is a metastasis here in the mediastinum. We compared our results to a lump gold standard of imaging, clinical follow-up, surgery, and histopathology. The sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and the ne negative predictive value were 96%, 99%, 96%, and 99%, which were very high. And compared to surgical and histopathological reports only, uh, the sensitivity and specificity were 96% and 93%. In total, head pet CT is a valuable tool with high sensitivity and specificity to, uh, which is helpful for diagnosis. And also more importantly, it rules out patients with, uh, with biochemistry symptoms and radiology, uh, with sus which is suspicious for pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. Coming to uh, this topic, non-invasive imaging of pancreatic sympathetic innervation in individuals with type two diabetes. These patients uh, were the same patients from the first um, part of this presentation, um, but we noticed that there was hydroxyhephedrine uptake in the pancreas and we wondered uh, of course, we know that there is physiological uptake in the heart tissue, the pancreas, and also the liver. But then we, we intervened and saw uh, more. The aim of this study was to um, um, see if carbon-11 hydroxyhepatron pet CT was feasible to study these patients. Uh, and in, in few patients, there was, uh, we, we noticed clinically that there were, they had diabetes and in few patients, they didn't have diabetes. So, Coming to the etiology, epidemiology of diabetes, uh, the global prevalence, as you know, is only increasing. But uh, still, uh, complete uh, understanding of the disease etiology is lacking. We focused, therefore, on one common hypothesized cofactor in disease etiology, that is the nervous system. Non-invasive imaging tool was carbon-11 hydroxyhepedrine PET-CT. Why did, uh, why did we use this? How did we use this? Hydroxyhepedrin is a norepinephrine molecule, uh, as you know. It was first used to image the sympathetic innervation of the heart. 
also it physiologically uh, is uh, uptaken in the heart, lung, pancreas, and brown adipose tissue. Carlson et al. systematically screened uh, imaging biomarkers to, to image the islets of the pancreas. And they found that carbon 11 hydroxyephedrine is a suitable tracer, which is um, uh, to image the sympathetic nervous system. But what is the connection between sympathetic innervation and diabetes? Dysregulation of islet sympathetic innervation was seen in human type 1 diabetes by Christopher, Christopherson et al. Pancreas is richly innervated by the autonomic nervous system. Uh, innervation patterns of autonomic axons, uh, sorry, once. Uh, innovation, uh, there is a role of glucagon and insulin in the sympathetic signaling and uh, neural control is important for the fine tuning of these responses. Mm -hmm. To understand early events in pancreatic beta, beta cell loss is very important to understand the pathophysiology of diabetes and therefore the study was done. Also, stereological studies reveal that the head, body, and tail of the pancreas uh, differ in the beta cell mass. We identified 100 patients who underwent head PET CT scans at our center, and only 89 were included in the current study. Out of these, 25 had type 2 diabetes, and 64 had non-diabetes, sorry, uh, they were non-diabetic. We delineated the pancreas by using a special software called the Affinity Viewer. The whole pancreas was delineated using a 41% maximum cutoff of the activity, and six anatomical regions were delineated on CT. As you can see, we first uh, used the software to delineate the pancreas. We applied the delineation on the CT. Then we went ahead and divided the pancreatic regions on the CT. And we found we got six anatomical regions. These uh, through these anatomical regions, we uh, we had um, uptake parameters, um, and these uptake parameters were the SUV, the functional neural volume, the CT attenuation, and the volume. The functional neural volume is nothing but the mean SUV in the in all of the pancreas multiplied with the volume of the pancreas. And the specific binding index was calculated in the pancreas um, by dividing the, the SUV mean of the pancreas by the SUV mean of the blood in the left ventricle to standardize this measure. We then compared all these parameters in type two diabetes um, individuals and non-diabetic individuals for the entire pancreas, for all the six pancreatic regions and within them. Also, we divided the type two diabetes uh, individuals into two cohorts, uh, one with small pancreatic volume and the other with a large, larger pancreatic volume. And then we ran the analysis again. These were our results. We found that the measure SVI uh, helped us better in differentiating these patients than uh, the standardized uptake value.
as you can see here, um, the specific binding index was lower in type two diabetes individuals than with non-diabetes individuals. And also CT attenuation was lower in type two diabetes individuals than non-diabetes individuals. Also the specific binding index in the functional volume mm, which we obtained uh, was also lower in type two diabetes individuals than in uh, the, the other cohort. Also, when we divided these, uh, the type two diabetes cohort into smaller pancreatic volume and the larger pancreatic volume, the larger pancreatic volume individuals showed um, lower uptake compared to the other one, other cohort, which is the, the non-diabetic cohort. Also in the larger pancreatic volume um, individuals, we found that the head caudal region had the lowest uptake. Here you can see on, on your top right corner that uh, this is a patient, sorry, this is an individual with a, uh, with a uptake in the pancreas. Uh, and this is a type two diabetes individual with a meager uptake in the pancreas. In conclusion, we, we found that we showed uh, that hydroxyapatrin PET CT was feasible for non-invasive in assessment of the human pancreatic sympathetic innervation uh, in uh, human individuals. Coming to the third topic uh, of the day, which is favorable outcome in patients with pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma treated with lutetium dolgate. This was done to assess the outcome of peptide receptor radiotherapy with lutetium dotate in pheochromocytoma or paraganglioma patients. Previously, Kong et al. Evalu uh, evaluated 14 patients with a uh, median overall, overall survival of 39 months. And Yadav et al. Uh, used PRRT with capacitabin uh, in 21 patients. And they saw that the median PFS uh, was 32 months. These were all the only studies before our study uh, to have been done in patients with pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. And these were retrospective studies, which were comparable. The current study. So we had 22 patients, 13 men and nine women. Nine had pheochromocytoma, 11 were diagnosed with paraganglioma. Uh, out of which two had head and neck paragangliomas, which we separated. 13 were first line therapy, uh, were given first line therapy lutetium dotate, and th um, nine were given because of progressive disease. Uh, the, the choice of radionuclide, which has to be used for the theranostic purposes, uh, was uh, was based on scintigraphy studies or um, gallium dotatate studies. If there is a heterogeneous expression, the tracer with most favorable distribution was applied for subsequent, subsequent therapy. It, it was a retros, uh, retrospective cohort study between uh, 2005 and 2008. The lutetium dotate cycles administered were four, and 19 out of 22 patients underwent dosimetry guided PRRT. CT results were assessed according to RESIST 1.1. The PFS and OS were calculated. Uh, biochemical tumor response. <laughs> Ruchi, can you please mute the audience? Yeah, yeah, he's been muted. 
Sorry about that. Um, sorry. So, yeah. Um, toxicity in these patients was assessed according to CTCAE uh, version 4. And the pos possible predictive uh, uh, factors uh, for OS and PF were, PFS were tested in a kaplan mayer analysis. These were the results. We saw partial response in two patients and most patients re uh, reached stable disease. There was no hematological or kidney toxicity grade three or four. The scintigraphic response was 74% and partial remission on whole body scans was seen in nine patients. The biochemical response was divided into chromogranin A uh, measures and catecholamine measures. And uh, there was a decrease of more than 50% in six patients and uh, more than 25% uh, uh, decrease of catecholamines was registered in nine patients. The median overall survival in these patients was 49 months and the median progression-free survival was 21 months. In conclusion, PRRT with lutetium dotatate was associated with a favorable outcome. We also used head pet CT in post-operative surveillance and uh, to monitor therapy in Pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma patients. The main aim of this study was to uh, assess uh, the adult added clinical benefit of carbon 11 and hydroxyapatrin PET CT to contrast enhanced CT or MRI in patients with metastatic PCC or PGL. The indication for head PET CT was post operative surveillance was in 68 patients. There was suspected biochemical response in these um, patients who were operated primarily for pheochromocytoma and now presented to the clinic again for uh, with a suspected biochemical recurrence in 25 cases. And some of them presented to the clinic and were undergoing therapy and they relapsed or there was a uh, indication to use head pet CT while therapy monitoring. And this was possible in 40 patients. And for some patients, a restaging had to be done. And, and therefore we used head pet CT. You can see the distribution of the same here. So 74 patients, uh, presented to the clinic with complaints of probably a, a metastatic recurrence, but only in 32 cases, uh, a head pet CT was positive. And in 42 cases, it was negative, which meant uh, as uh, according to our first study that we could re rule out these patients um, that they didn't have any metastasis at that point. In 21 patients, uh, they had a pheochromocytoma diagnosis, and in 11 patients, they had a paraganglioma diagnosis. What were our methods? Tumor detection in a lesion by lesion analysis uh, compared to CT, monitoring therapy response with PET parameters, SUV, and total catecholamine measures in comparison to. RESIST 1.1 applied through CT or MRI, the clinical impact of head pet CT and comparison with other imaging which is available at our center. When we did a lesion by uh, lesion analysis in these patients, we found that the head pet CT had 98.7% sensitivity and CT alone had 48% sensitivity. When we compared with other available imaging, we also found that head pet CT is much more useful. 
as you can see, the sensitivity of 97% for head PET CT, but for other modality, it was 40%, 50%, and 22%. In conclusion, head PET CT provided an added clinical benefit in patients with metastatic PCC or PGL in comparison to contrast enhanced CT or MRI. To, to recapitulate, uh, head PET CT was a valuable tool in the workup of pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, which presented uh, primarily to the clinic. PRRT with lutetium dotatate was associated with favorable outcome. Head PET CT provided an added clinical benefit in patients with metastatic pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. And head PET CT was feasible for non-invasive assessment in diabetes mellitus. Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you, Ram. Excellent talk. Uh, very enlightening, in fact. Um, uh, I'll wait uh, if someone has a question. Otherwise, I, I can start and I have a few questions. Yes, please. Okay. So uh, one of the studies that you uh, mentioned before the last one, uh, you talked about, uh, you know, uh, using uh, HD PET CT in assessing response to lutetium Dota Tate therapy. Yes. And you mentioned that, you know, the response criteria were resist. And then you mentioned re scintigraphic response. Can you elaborate on that? And you... Sorry, go on. Um... And, how, and what did you mean by partial uh, remission on whole body scan? Was those post-therapy emission scans or... So, uh, I, I'm just going to that slide there. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Yes. So, we applied uh, RESIST 1.1 criteria to assess these patients. And also, scintigraphic response was assessed retrospectively. Uh, so we, we divided these patients and the partial response and the stable disease uh, that you see here is based on uh, RESIST 1.1 alone. And then we presented our re results separately for the scintigraphical response here. So these were different responses. So the scintigraphic response is based on HED PET CT. Uh, sorry, no, it's, it's based on MIBG, scintigraphic. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, head pet CT is not involved in this study. Just to. Okay. I am sorry. Your presentation. And the, and the last study that you presented where, uh, you know, uh, you said HED pet CT is very good in assessing response, uh, you know, follow up progression free survival and overall survival. But did you had a chance to compare with the Dota Tate PET CT, or because I saw you you showed a table where it was superior to CT, MR, and even indium octreo scan? But yes, I I, I didn't see Dota Tate PET there. Um, so in this study, we compare uh, we compare with gallium sixty eight Dota Tate. Okay, okay. The the problem is we don't have our results yet. Uh, mm -hmm. There were very few patients to compare with, and uh, therefore it's only probable that we do a prospective study in in this comparison to understand how they how these two differ. Um, this is a very famous question of uh, what to use, uh, what to treat with, um, what is the diagnostic agent of choice in these patients. Is it MIBG? Is it lutetium dotatate? And it is very easy to think that lutetium dotatate is the future and to go on to treat patients only with that because we are uh, assessing if lutetium dotatate or MIBG is suitable at this point based on MIBG scintigraphy 
and um, lutetium, sorry, uh, gallium dotatate, which is a PET uh, tracer and MIBG scintigraphy is a uh, non-PET tracer. So we are not comparing uh, like, uh, like for like. So the uh, in our in our assessment, we saw that head pet CT is much much better compared to MIBG, and when we compared in the few patients of six or seven um, patients with gallium sixty eight dotted eight, we found that the lesions that appear on MIB uh, sorry on head pet CT are different from the lesions that appear on uh, that we detect on gallium 68 dotted 8, but this still has to be confirmed. But the question remains of what to use before treating them with radionuclide therapy agents. I think uh, going into the future, it's better to perform a head PET CT scan and a gallium 68 dotted 8 PET CT scan to assess these patients and thereby pick the radionuclide of choice. Yeah, thank you. And I think uh, you answered part of Dr. Josna Rao's question. She asked, how does head compare with DOTA scans? And you elaborated on that. It's and the same guess... thing with DOPA also and dopamine also. Uh, head PET CT shows uh, much, much higher sensitivity than DOPA and uh, uh, dopamine. Uh, when we compare the literature currently that we have, but no prospective studies comparing them head on have been done yet. Do we have any questions? Otherwise, I have another question. Uh, Very um, from this, yeah, one, one comment. Um, it's C11, you need an on site uh, cyclotron, right? So, not everyone would have that. So, uh, can it be labeled with? Um, gallium 68 or that is a problem uh, it hydroxyephedrine can be labeled with uh, F18 uh, but then um, you need to figure out um, chemistry um, the, the chemistry here the production method here and also um, yeah, it is true that carbon-11 is not widely available. Therefore, other tracers have to emerge in the field looking at this data, uh, how useful hydroxyephedrine as a molecule is, which binds to the same uh, receptor which MIBG binds to, but is a PET tracer. So the, the talk also points out that there is a necessity in the field to have a PET tracer which binds to the uh, the, the norepinephrine receptor. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Does this HED PET provide any prognostic information on any predictive bio? Uh, you can be used as a predictive biomarker. Uh, have we have into this. We have not found anything as such. Uh, the real use of using head PET CT in pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma patients is to detect uh, tumor lesions, which can be treatable with MIBG and they're on. Uh, what has been your experience in the um, percentage of patients that go for MIBG therapy versus <clears throat> dotatate therapy? It's, is it primarily driven on imaging or is it also based on the clinical situation, the patient's, uh, you know, uh, biochemical profile and, you know, performance status and all that? Do those also come into play when you decide whether um, of course, biochemistry matters. At, at our center, um, it is very straightforward if you have a gallium 68 PET CT positive patient, 
but with uh, uh, many lesions, then you compare it with MIBG, then you have fewer lesions, then it's a very straightforward case of going with lutetium. That's mm -hmm. very straightforward. But when it comes to an equivocal patient, and there comes the problem, and then if the patient, if if they are, they're usually not producing as much as biochemistry as you would like. So biochemistry doesn't help there. Um, and the next question comes on uh, how the patient performance is. So lutetium, uh, as you know, has um, um, is dosimetry guided, and therefore it has um, it has a better favorable outcome. Whereas um, MIBG um, has its issues, so we tend to go towards lutetium. So also, more elderly population, more compromised renal function, you'll uh, lean more towards lutetium-based therapy versus more fit patients, younger patient population, um, and of course, good uptake on HED, PET, CT that leads towards more uh, MIBG therapy. Absolutely, yes. Uh, thank you. Dr. Uh, Josna has put in another question in the chat box. The clinical utility in diabetes. Yeah, so uh, my question was, when would you suggest doing the scan and where do you see its future actually in diabetes? Because it's a very uh, problematic disease with a lot of people are being affected. So where do you see its role? Absolutely. The, the prevalence is increasing, but at the moment we used head pet CT as more of a, a tool to understand its physiology or pathophysiology uh, rather than to use it clinically. Um, we, we are planning to do a prospective study um, with this tracer in these uh, in these individuals and probably based on the on that data we could surely say if this can be introduced to the clinic as well but uh, the most um, but there is a application to the industry where in the future they can use this to understand if the patient um, was treated with the right uh, uh, had a the 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 pharma pharmacological approach towards treating this patient was uh, in the correct direction or not? Um, okay, I missed the initial uh, piece of your talk because I'm also on call, so I was yes. taking care of that. So pardon me if I ask a stupid question. That's no that problem. you have already explained. So uh, the HED PET in uh, its role in diabetes, could it be used as a screening tool or is it just for response assessment and choosing the correct pharmacologic therapy, as you mentioned? Uh, um, if probably... Could it be something that people can know they are predisposed to develop diabetes? Could it be a kind of that screening tool or no? No, but I don't okay. think we uh, we found that in our research, or that was a research question. But also, uh, with my experience with uh, head pet CT, it's uh, as you can see in these images, um, it can't for sure be a screening tool. Correct. Correct. No, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ram. This was very very. Uh, excellent talk, very, uh, very comprehensive, and uh, we learned a lot. Any more questions? Otherwise, I'll I'll give you 15 minutes back of your precious time, uh, and we can conclude the session. All right, I think we do not have any more questions. So thank you all for attending the webinar, and uh, you enjoy rest of your day or evening and take care. Thank you, Saima. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.